If I told you that there was someone that lost over a hundred thousand dollars high ticket drop shipping, would you be scared of this business model? Would you do it? What 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 would be the next uh, course of action? Mike, try and stay in the frame. I made our uh, our images a little bigger. So we're good now. Stay like that. Don't move. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about someone that lost, I believe, over $100,000 high ticket dropshipping. And, you know, it's not really funny. Like it kind of, you know, obviously it, it sucks a lot for him. And we're going to tell you how it happened and how you can avoid such a mistake. So and, and I want to be clear, clear about something, Mike. The types of mistakes he made are not necessarily exclusive to any one business model. And I think we're going to get into this because, uh, yeah, let me, but I wanted to say that, say that up front. So Mike, why don't you give a little bit of background on the story? No, no, no names obviously, but you know, well, um, this person I, I had done some coaching calls with and I believe their store was going well. And I think, um, they got a little bit too big for their britches, as uh, as they say. And so I believe what happened is they really just stopped paying attention to their store. They really tried to scale their ads too quickly. Um, I was not involved at this point, but they really scaled up their ads and they weren't keeping track of stock or financials or really anything. And I think they were just uh, living the high life. Yeah. And what I mentioned before, Mike, is so while he was doing this, he was probably seeing the cha-chings coming in, the sales coming in. You know, life is good. Who needs to look at my ad account, how much I'm spending when I have all these sales coming in? You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're placing all these orders when you're at a negative. So you're basically buying products to lose money. Um, and yeah, that's. Uh, that's basically how it happened is, you know, the, the dopamine hits of the Shopify cha-ching is hitting kind of corrupted the, uh, the whole process. And you know what, Mike, I've seen this happen before, not in high ticket drop shipping, but, um, you know, someone that I know was, they have a totally different business. They don't, I don't even know, you know, they don't, I don't even know if they do e-commerce, but they, you know, they sell this niche product, you know, they go to trade shows and have all sorts of, you know, relationship with customers, with different vendors and stuff like that. It's like kind of a complicated business. You would look at, you know, they have like a office space and warehouse and you would look at this business and think, wow, this is like, you know, this person is doing really well. You know, they have all this stuff, this big operation. But when you go a little bit beneath the surface, they're not profitable. All they're paying attention to is you know, the amount of units that they're selling and the amount of new customers that they're getting, but they're not paying attention to the overhead. The overhead is getting inflated, inflated, inflated. And then all of a sudden you got to take out business loans to keep up with the business. And I, I want to tell you something, Mike, I get these phone calls all the time. And I feel like the thing with business loans, there's obviously some sort of a predatory market out there because I'll get voicemails on my phone and be like, Hey, this is Jacqueline. We have $250,000 waiting for you. Call us back now. You'll get it today. So there is some sort of predatory market for business loans. So what I'm trying to, and I'm sure there's tons and tons of people in the situation where they're not watching their overhead in uh, all sorts of businesses. Is that the top line, Joe? Is that the top line? Is what the What's top the line? What's the difference between the top line and the bottom line? The bottom line is how much you're taking home. The top line is how much revenue you have before your expenses. Right. So they're paying too much attention to the top line. Everyone's always trying to flex about their top line, but no one ever talks about the bottom line. No. And and so, go ahead. Go ahead. It seems like in your friend's case with the warehouse and stuff, yeah, it's like it, on, on the outside, it looks like you got all these things going on, um, but – that's really the problem with internet marketing and just business in general is like people look from the outside and they're like, wow, this guy must be doing so well because of just external material stuff. But you have no idea how much they're in debt to whatever, you know, whatever business loan they have or whatever person and they're just living off of, off of debt. There's no way to distinguish that. So with the person that was, that lost all this money drop shipping, 
they weren't paying any attention to their bottom line either. Because the thing about drop shipping that could either be a good thing or a bad thing is you get an order, you get paid for it, and then there's like a lag time between uh, when you have to pay the supplier sometimes. So if you're getting in a bunch of orders and stuff is out of stock and like, you know, let's say you have customers are willing to wait for the item and it's going to ship in however many weeks, your bank account is going up and up and up and you're not paying attention to how much of that money is actually yours versus how much is going to go out to the suppliers. And so you have all this money in your bank account. You're looking at your ad account. You're like, screw it. I'm going to keep up in this. And you're not actually getting into the details of what money is yours and what money is not yours. And then the time is going to come when the supplier is like, hey, we want money. Uh, this person also wasn't, I believe, like answering customers. And so he got a whole bunch of chargebacks. Yeah. And then Shopify started holding his money. So now he can't pay the suppliers to fulfill the orders. So that's how it happens. And Mike, you know, we're guilty of this as well to an extent because, you know, it took us a while to kind of realize the bank account inflation that can happen, you know, when you have a bunch of orders in, but you still owe money to your suppliers. Um, that's something that, you know, sometimes we we would look on a month to month basis and we'd be concerned about what's going on. But then when we look over the year, be like, oh, wow, we made, you know, a good amount of money. But the bank account month to month, if you look at it in a snapshot in time, it doesn't really mean that much. And I feel like it took us a little while to to come to those terms. And I feel like obviously we still have to up our uh, our game a little bit when it comes to tracking all this. But I feel the way that we track it in a, in a very simple metric to where, you know, we, we have a, an ongoing picture of of what's happening is the uh, the ROAS, the return on ad spend, because that gives you a good indication of you're making this many sales, you're spending this much. And as long as that is in check, then it, it's a pretty good metric to indicate that you're not going to have that problem or that you won't have that yeah. problem because you're only spending so much money. Right. It's a really good sort of top level indicator of, hey, I'm not losing money here. And so typically with like a dropshipping store, um, our students, ourselves, will get somewhere between um, – Minimum 10, I've seen upwards of like 30, 40 times return on ad spend. So that means if you spend $10,000 on your ads that month, a 10 times return on ad spend would mean that you've made 10x. So you spend 10,000, your revenue is 100,000. And so typical margins with high ticket drop shipping are usually around 20%. So you know, hey, if I did at least 10 times return on my ad spend, then I'm profitable because, you know, I know my average margin is 20%. And so I'll take home, you know, 10% of that top line revenue. Um, on top of the fact, I mean, you know, back in the day before our accounting was not as solid, let's say like through like bookkeeping and stuff, we would at least look every month. We'd look at all of our orders, see how much we made on those orders and look at our ad spend and whatever other expenses, which were pretty low. We didn't really have employees at the time. So we were, we were tracking like what we were making on each order and then also tracking the ad spend. So if you're not doing that, you're not tracking your return on ad spend as far as your revenue, then uh, yeah, you're kind of screwed because the, the number on the bank account really doesn't mean anything. Because um, yeah, you could either owe a lot of money or you could have a lot of credit cards you have to pay or you could have a lot of money coming in. You got a big Shopify payout coming up. So it's yeah. uh, – not a very good indication. And Mike, I believe that we are in the process or at least moving towards the direction of implementing something a little bit more sophisticated where we have a, you know, kind of like a rolling uh, list of our uh, our orders that we haven't shipped yet and haven't paid for yet. So that's something that, you know, like I said before, tracking the return on ad spend and all that has worked well for us. But we're looking at taking it to the next level, at least in the in the uh, in the next coming months, just to really get everything financially uh, strict and and in a way that's easy to understand. Right, because the more you know about your financials, if you can say with precision how much you're making each month, which gets really it gets exceedingly hard as you start having multiple dropshipping stores, you have content sites, because all these things have different lag times in terms of 
output and input. Dropshipping, we got to pay suppliers, you know, pretty readily. But with content sites, maybe we don't get paid on our affiliate commissions for six to 30 days. So, yeah, if you're not actually tracking all these things, then you can't make the best decisions for growing the company. If you don't know how much you made, say if, if maybe, maybe you made $2,000 total that month, should you go out and should you hire an executive assistant for $100,000? No, it's probably not worth it. You're not making enough money. If you're making $60,000 a month profit, maybe you should hire that executive assistant. So it, it's important to get down as nitty gritty as possible to understand and make, you know, decisions when it comes to hiring, scaling, or what to scale back on. Right. Yeah. Cause we could look at our bank account and we could say, Oh, you know, maybe we don't have a lot of money, but yet we have this hundred thousand dollar payout coming or we could look at it and say, Oh wow, we have a ton of money, but we, you know, owe some orders for some suppliers and it becomes even more complicated, you know, when you're talking about uh, distributions to yourselves and all sorts of things like that as to how much the business is actually making. So the point is, if you could take away one thing from this, pay attention. That's very simple. Pay attention to your return on ad spend. If your return on ad spend is not favorable, you know, you have a rough number. Hey, my supplier's margin is 10 to 30 percent and your return on ad spend isn't 10 X, 5 X, whatever. Um, have those rough numbers in your head. And that's a surefire way to uh, make sure you're not going to end up in the in a bad situation. Exactly. And so buildassetsonline.com slash playbook, free web class. You want to learn how to build an online asset portfolio. And uh, that's about it. Take it easy.